Right now, here where I am in Thailand at the moment, there is a frantic search going on for nuclear radioactive waste. Apparently this stuff is lost. No one knows where it is. Could turn up on your doorstep. Seriously, I mean, who knows? The thing is, this story wouldn't be that crazy if it hadn't have actually happened in Australia only one month ago. In fact, nuclear waste just suddenly somehow getting lost in the ether just disappearing and popping up in the most bizarre of places has happened much more often than you'd realize. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. As you know, I'm a big fan of renewable energy, of electricity, of electric cars, of the future of the world, of solar panels, of batteries, and wind generation. This year, the price of battery technology, of batteries cells themselves, has already come down by 20%. Solar panels, prices have come down by 30%, wind by 10%. But if you look at the cost declines over the past 10 years, they are astronomical. Nuclear, nada, nothing has changed. But one thing has changed, capsules with nuclear waste in them seem to be getting lost mysteriously, regularly. Now you might be thinking, why are you bringing this up? Well, the reason being there are still so many people, including people who watch this channel, who firmly believe that the future of the world's energy is nuclear and not solar, wind or battery storage. It's not renewables. It's nuclear. Now, Renew Economy published an article recently saying, is nuclear power in a global death spiral? And the question here is, is nuclear energy becoming an energy source that actually is in use more? Well, last year was the same as it has been for the past 30 years, nothing changed. A small number of reactor startups and a small number of closures. There were seven reactor startups worldwide in 2022 and five permanent reactor closures, a net gain of 4.2 gigawatts of electricity generating capacity. Here's the thing though, the fleet of mostly young reactors 30 years ago is now a fleet of mostly aging reactors due to the aging of the reactor fleet, the International Atomic Energy Agency or the AEA, anticipates the closure of 10 reactors or 10 gigawatts per year from 2018 to 2050. The truth is, even according to the nuclear agencies themselves, nuclear power is dying. It's now been exactly 12 years since the world held its breath and learned to pronounce the word Fukushima. On the 11th of March, 2011, a massive earthquake and tsunami devastated large areas along Japan's eastern coastline. I'm sure you've seen the videos. They were catastrophic. Houses were torn apart and went floating along rivers of water. It breached the safety and backup systems of the Tokyo Electric Power Company, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power stations, leading to a meltdown, mass evacuations, hundreds of billions of dollars in economic loss, and the release of large volumes of radioactive contamination to the ocean and to the air. More than $120 billion has been spent stabilizing the stricken site, says Renew Economy, but the crisis continues today. Following the disaster, large volumes of radioactive water were collected and stored. This includes water used to cool nuclear fuel rods along with the contaminated groundwater, rainwater, and seepage water. Between one and 300 tons of water are collected every day, and there are more than 1,000 large tanks holding around 1.3 million tons of contaminated water on site. TEPCO, T-E-P-C-O, proposes to directly discharge the waste into the Pacific Ocean this year. Isn't that delightful? Imagine how much the fish are gonna like that. TEPCO intends to treat the water prior to discharge to remove some contaminants, using a process known as the Advanced Liquid Processing System. Now, who knows if that's gonna work, but the crazy thing is here, we know there's been a number of nuclear disasters. Are we sitting on the doorstep of another one? I don't know. However, a tiny radioactive capsule that fell from a truck was found in Australia's outback following a frantic search along a huge desert highway. Mining agent Rio Tinto issued an apology for the loss of the coin-sized silver capsule, which contains enough cesium-137 to send out 10 x-ray blasts every single hour, and it fell somewhere along the Western Australian 870-mile Highway 95 during January. 
This triggered a widespread search, a fair bit of panic, as you can imagine. No one really likes to have the possibility of nuclear waste sitting in their backyard. It's possible it could have been in their front yard, maybe more likely. And the capsule was fortunately found in a highway near the town of Newman, which I've actually been to, and will be taken to a secure facility in Perth. How does this stuff just fall out of a truck? We're talking radioactive nuclear material. Well, it happens more often than you'd think. Here in Thailand, there is a search on right now for radioactive material, which is missing from a power plant in Prashinburi. Officials from Thailand's Office of Atoms for Peace, that's the name, Atoms for Peace, okay? And Prashinburi Provincial Administration are trying to recover an unspecified amount, unspecified amount of radioactive material which went missing from a power plant in Prashinburi province on the 23rd of February. Uh, it's now the 15th of March, it hasn't turned up. Who the hell knows where this stuff is? The dangerous material, well, that's an, an understatement, isn't it? The very dangerous material is contained in a steel tube about five inches in diameter and 12 inches long. And anyone who encounters it is advised, of course, to stay away and immediately alert the authorities. But the thing is, if you encounter this stuff, how you even know what it is? Hmm. Prussian Bureau Governor Ronorong Nakon Jinda and CAP Secretary General went to the power plant to investigate. The governor expressed concern that the dangerous material might have been stolen or improperly disposed of, or sent to Iran, or I don't know, some other place, which will be harmful to people who come into close contact with it. Cesium-137 is a radioactive isotope formed as one of the more common products by the nuclear fission of uranium-235 and other fissionable isotopes in nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons. And an expert in the disposable of radioactive materials, Sumitha Wishin Pet said that cesium-137 was used in checking for invisible cracks in pipelines in the power plant, adding that the radiation emitted is toxic to humans. The radiation is invisible and has no odor, and those who are exposed to it will suffer necrosis on the part of the body, which was in contact with the material. And over the following days, their natural immunity will be reduced, their hair will fall out, and likely they will die. Now, personally, there hasn't been any disasters that I've heard of involving solar, wind, or battery storage. Sure, there's been fires and small things here and there, but nothing to really worry about. Fortunately, renewable energy is reducing in price constantly. Fortunately, we have Adelaide and South Australia to show us to prove that yes, massive grids can run pretty much only on renewable energy. Not pretty much, in fact, only on renewable energy. It can be done. It's being done now. And no, we don't need nuclear to do it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.